Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today I'd like to take you on an end of May garden tour through my secret garden and through our peony fields and I want to show you what's in bloom right now. So if we haven't met yet, my name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey and I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So it's the end of May here on our Cranberry Fields, New Jersey Jersey farm and my peony fields are just bursting open with blooms. We had like two or three 90 degree days, which is so crazy for us for May. And it basically made the entire field just kind of burst open. So I wanted to show you some of this beauty and I wanted to give you some terrific peony tips while we're walking through the field. Look at the spectacular colors on these gals. I'm going to just walk you up and down some of these aisles so you can see some of the different colors and some of the varieties. These are more of those doubles. And this is a gorgeous magenta color. The thing with peonies is they have super heavy heads. So the rain and the wind will often knock them over. So it's a good idea to have some planting uh, support systems in place for them. And they sell them on, you know, in your garden centers and in Amazon. And it's simply just like a little peony cage. Some people call it a peony cage. And you could just put it around the plant either when it's super young, because that's like an easy way to do it. And you can even find the ones that you can put around them when they're mature like this. And that will just keep it from flopping over. Some more of those doubles, lots of doubles. These are the Sarah Bernhardts that are just opening up now. It's so beautiful being out here in these peony fields. It's just like this burst of peony fairyland. How massive some of these blooms are going to be. And this one's going to explode and probably be about the same size as this one. And this is just a picture of like my thumb compared to how big this bloom is. I mean, is that crazy? It's it's just tremendous. There's a beautiful one in back. Peonies love to be planted in full sun, but they can take uh, some afternoon shade if you only have a spot that gets like say, I don't know, like six hours of sun in the morning and then it gets shady. I would try it out because I have seen them grown in shade. Some varieties of peonies are better in shade than others, but it can be done. But if you have the choice, plant them in that full sunshine because they really love that best. They love well-drained soil and they do not like to be planted too deep. If you plant them too deep, there's a chance that you might wind up with a load of really beautiful lush green leaves, but you may not have the flower blooms. So that's like the number one reason why people don't get their peonies to bloom is because they'll plant them with more than two inches of soil above the eye of the plant. I find that the double peony blooms and the bomb varieties hold up better against the wind than the single peony blooms. I think it's because they're just a little bit sturdier, a little tougher, a little thicker. Next to these guys are my Sarah Bernhardts that aren't quite ready to burst open yet. They're starting to be in that marshmallow stage, which is that great stage to kind of cut them out when they're nice and squishy. There's some more of these beautiful whites. We just planted this gal in the ground. Looks pretty happy. These are some of the gorgeous blooms that we already cut this morning. We try to cut these super early in the morning uh, before they get pooped out from the heat. So it's always a good idea to cut your flowers either super early morning or late, late afternoon when they've had a chance to cool off. You don't want to cut your flowers in midday when they're kind of exhausted from the sun. And 
then here's some other really beautiful peonies. These gals are all going to burst open pretty soon. And then these gals are like the first to open up. I have to say, I don't remember the name of these guys. Does anybody know the name of these? Put it in comments below or let us know on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. I think it's either Sorbet or Raspberry Sunday, but I'm not sure. They weren't labeled when I put them in the ground. And they look like, I don't know, there's like four or five different peonies that look similar to this, and I'm never quite sure which one it is. So if you guys know the exact name, please let me know in comments below. But these are one of my absolute favorites. And they're gigantic, like this is my thumb. This is how big this flower is next to my thumb. Okay, and of course, hello lady. Over here, I have some Ito peonies. And Ito peonies are a cross between a herbaceous peony, which is what I was just showing you. Those are considered to be herbaceous. Uh, so they're a cross between herbaceous peonies and tree peonies. And some gardeners have said that they get 100 blooms from their Ito peonies once they're established after four or five years. So we'll see. These guys are only about, I think I put them in the ground about two or three years ago. And the first year uh, I had blooms on them because I bought them and they had like little, you know, like buds like this. So those exploded into blooms. And then the second year I didn't get any blooms. And the third year I didn't get any blooms because the plant was just establishing itself. And that happens a lot with peonies. So if you get a brand new peony plant and it has buds on it, the same thing's probably gonna happen. You're probably gonna get blooms that first year because, you know, the garden centers had it all kind of pumped up. And uh, the second year it's gonna, spend its time on root development and leaf development so it may not give you flowers so don't feel bad and don't think that there's something wrong with your peony it's just using its energy to get established some of you have mentioned the gardener's saying where it's sleep creep and leap so the first year it sleeps it's kind of doesn't look like it's doing too much the second year it starts to creep open and the third year it kind of leaps open and it's like wonderful and this guy's kind of doing its leaping year so that's Ito peonies, and they come in beautiful pinks and yellows, and there's a variety called Bartzella. I know DutchBulbs.com sends them, and they, uh, DutchBulbs.com sent me a lot of these peonies. This is my back row where I have my rows of Sharons and my limelight planted. Um, no color yet, but I think they're getting pretty well established. I love how Lucy just floats through the peony field, and she's like this giant boat, but she hardly ever like tramples over a flower, which is unbelievable. Like, how can that be? This big, massive bear, and I don't think I've lost many flowers to her throughout the years. Here's a Sarah Bernhardt. Oh, no, oh I take it back. This might be a Raspberry Sunday that's opening up here, because I can see there's like some white petals in the middle of it. And then we'll take a walk to the Secret Garden. Now we're back by the Secret Garden, and I want to show you some of the color that's starting to come out. Right now it's mostly uh, green, but the color is just starting to burst forward. So I want to show you what some of these plants look like. So here on the way back fence are my lilacs. And once again, this is the end of May. And I have a different variety of lilac that had already bloomed in the garden, but this is a different variety. It's a more delicate bloom, but they are absolutely beautiful. And the smell is unbelievable. Nothing like the smell of a lilac. And they're just getting ready to open up. Now lilacs don't have a great vase life and that's because they have like a wooded stem. But some people say that if you trim the stem and then you smash the bottom of it with a hammer, it kind of opens up um, like the waterways a little bit more and allows more water to get to the actual flower. Some people say it's a myth. I usually do that or sometimes I'll just take a clipper and I'll just like slide, like when I snip it, I'll just give the, the stem a little slice down the middle, about an inch. And um, I hope that that kind of gives that flower a little more water. So I think that helps, but these are really pretty. I love, I love a hedge of flowers. There's something about a wall of flowers. 
that's just absolutely beautiful. So that's my wall of lilacs. And not much more color going on here, except for my peonies, which are about to burst open. These guys are in afternoon shade. They have the morning sun and afternoon shade. And most peonies prefer to be planted in full sun, but these guys are doing okay. But that's why they're not really opened up as much as their sister plants that are in the field right now. So if you notice, my other double magentas were wide open. So that shade kind of gives them a prolonged life. And then these gals are gonna open up pretty soon also. And guys, there's some ants all over this peony. And a lot of you have asked me about the ants on your peonies. So here's the story. I leave them alone. So they're not hurting the, the flower. They're not gonna hurt my plant by any means. And actually what they're doing is they're just licking away some of the nectar that's on top of your peony plant. Because at this stage of the game, there's a lot of like sticky um, nectar that's on top of this bud. And the plants, or the ants are simply eating it. Once again, they're not hurting the flower or the plant by any means. And some gardeners think that it actually helps the plant open up faster. Some people once again say, that's a myth. I love all these like tried and true garden things. And then people say, no, that's just a myth. And then people go back and forth. But um, they say that some, some gardeners think that it helps the flower bloom to open up faster. But either way, I leave them alone. And then the, um, the magic of this is, is that once those blooms start to open up, I hardly ever see the, uh, the ants again because I think they're really after that nectar that's only on it at this stage of the game. And if you do see some ants on your peony, it's not a big deal. What I'll simply do is I'll, t oh, there's tons of them over here. I'll simply take the plant and I'll give it like a little shake to the ground. I don't wanna knock these guys off and like ruin their day, but I would take it with my hand and just shake it uh, close to the ground. And then the ants just simply fall off. And other people, they actually will dunk their peony flower heads in water to get rid of the ants just to make sure that they get rid of them and then hopefully they'll empty the bucket of water so that they don't kill the ants. I know I don't think I'm strange but I get like really freaked out when people are like killing everything in, in their garden. Anyway just a little craziness and yeah so the limelight's uh, not blooming just yet that should come in a couple weeks. I've got a couple roses that are coming into play right now. Once again it's only May so it's not a huge burst of color. I'm not sure which rose this is um, Garden Obsessions, Angie, Ambrose, if you guys are watching, I know you're big into roses, um, let me know what this is. And if anyone knows what the exact name of this rose is, please let me know in comments below or hop on over to our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group and let me know, because that would be nice. And then here are some of these peonies that I showed you guys before that are in back of my Annabelle hydrangeas. And these guys are not double heads, they're single heads. And they just give this row like a little burst of color back here. So right now these Annabelles are gonna burst open with some white blooms, probably in about three weeks. But in the meantime, I have these gorgeous peonies here. These are the roses that are on the other side of the Annabelle hydrangeas. And they're super beautiful and super fragrant. I think they may be Abraham Darby. I don't know, what do you guys think? This was always a favorite spot to film like prom pictures. We would always have the kids come over for their prom pictures and everybody would line up by the roses. And so, yeah, so those are what the flowers are looking like this week. But I will do another garden tour super soon because there's going to be a lot more bursts of color happening each week. I'll keep you guys up to date. Thank you so much for joining us in this video. And please come say hi to us over on our Cranberry Fields Instagram page and also on the new Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. There's tons of gardeners checking in from all over the world on that Facebook group. And you guys are awesome because you're posting pictures of your own garden challenges and your successes. And you're asking tons of garden questions on that Facebook group. And you're answering each other. I love that. So our flower family is really getting together on that Facebook group. And please also join us over on our Pinterest page and our Patreon page in case you're interested in becoming a supporter of this YouTube channel. And please let me know where you're viewing this from in this great, big, beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. And I will see you in the next video.